we're back with another presentation. So I'm going to be covering the secure versions of the POP3 and SMTP protocols, otherwise known as POP3S and SMTPS. So here we go. As I said, we're going to cover the two protocols, how we can make them work on Linux and Windows, hardening suggestions, and then I can finish off with whatever I feel like sharing. So we're going to examine. First off, we're going to start off with POP3S. So both of these protocols that we're going to be covering are secure versions. So before I can talk about the secure version, I have to let you know what is POP3 and SMTP. So POP3 is a protocol that allows us to retrieve emails from any remote servers and they're sent to the client. So it establishes a client server protocol connection. And what makes it special is that after it's received and held on by the email server and it's sent to the client, it's then deleted from the server. So it enacts a one way connection. So this preserves the integrity of the email that is sent without potentially leaving any residual uh, residual emails which uh, interceptor can can gather and to late and the pop 3s simply means it's the secure post office protocol so it's a secure version of pop 3 where we use encryption from the transport layer security protocol to securely retrieve the email from those remote servers in which we discussed so basically say we're the client and we wish to retrieve an email from a server we go through the process but we establish encryption during the transport process so that way even if a packet sniffer or an interceptor manages to gain access it's going to be encrypted hash it's going to be pointless without a key without the key to decrypt the email it's not going to make sense to whoever is trying to acquire this information you may know it as SSL but again it's primarily known now as transport layer security encryption it's the most commonly used email protocol and it's built into many popular email clients including Outlook which you know as KSU students we use and it establishes using TCP connections so that means it's focused on ensuring that there's a secure connection during the transport process meaning that if we lose any bits and pieces of the information it has to be restored that means that quality of the message is prioritized even at the expense of speed now how it works is that we greet the system then it's authorized primarily typically through the three-way handshake that we all know then there's the transaction where we gain where we send and receive emails then after that we make the quit request afterwards it's into update mode which is also known as the goodbye by default it's established on port 110 but that means it's not encrypted so all emails are going to be sent as plain text during the transport and retrieval process but by establishing it over port TCP 995 this is where we're able to connect to pop 3 securely next we're going to be learning about the secure version of SMTP otherwise known as SMTPS it's SMTP is known as small mail transfer protocol and it's another protocol that focuses on server so it's server to server communication and we can retrieve it with an email client but this is primarily a communication between two servers over the internet during the email process now the difference between the regular and the secure version is again it allows us to secure SMTP at the transport layer but also provides authentication between communication partners because when we're encrypting a message we are required to authenticate both users at the start and end line of the transition process it's a standard and messages are sent through plain text or as encrypted hash when we're using SMTPS and it, we retreat, acquire these emails through a file system it allows these servers to communicate 
through commands and replies and we send these commands and replies through primarily through email requests. So I provi provided the default port and the TLS port they, because we're going to need this information going on when I discuss how can we configure both protocols on Windows and Linux. So first to configure POP3S, we go to Dovecote on the Ubuntu server. First, we have to make sure we install Dovecote. And as you can see from the command below, that's what we do. And it not only, this command not only establishes POP3, but also IMAP, which is going to be uh, a protocol that we're going to be discussing next week. So I would keep this command in mind when we, if, when we establish this configuration. Then we have to enable the POP3 in its main configuration file, which is already done by default thanks to Dovecut, so that's a good thing. We just have to enable the, the SSL or the TLS encryption. I already provided the commands below, and it's going to lead you to a page where you're going to establish the settings. Just simply write yes on SSL, and then when you're at, it's asking for the certificate, leave it blank because SSL by default uses self-signed certificates, so to prevent any complications, just leave it blank. If you wish for any further instructions, I left the link below. Next, to configure SMTPS on the Windows server, we're going to have to launch the ISS, man ISS Manager, which we've already done last week. And by default, again, this protocol is already managed in the installation, but I would recommend reviewing the manager to ensure that the tools are established. Otherwise, we might have to go through the entire wizard installation process again. So that could be a severe annoyance. So I would recommend reviewing the manager first before we do anything hasty. Then by establishing it on Postfix, we can use the hello command. You know, we can, since small mail transport protocol is the protocol that deals with incoming requests, we can use the command in order to properly configure the server. Afterwards, the following uh, command allows us to establish our IP address. So we already know our personal IP addresses. Then we put in the port number and that's where understanding what's the port number for TLS is important for this protocol. So I already left the commands ready for you to use and they're there for you. What hardening suggestions do I have? Oh, this is what I would do. You first look into the, into the install file because this is where the source code lies and it's best way to learn from the source, but this is also where it's most risky because you could risk causing disruptions or catastrophes if you don't know how to manage the source code well. So I would really highly recommend you do your research on this before you do so. Then next you link Doveco with OpenSSL. That's where it's going to enable the complete TLS and SSL transport for POP3S. And that way we can already establish a self-signed certificate. So this is an alternative option to what I previously suggested, but I would recommend more research. Afterwards, use the plain authentication that's provided for Dovecote to authenticate all usernames and passwords so you can protect whatever systems you're using, whatever information you're applying. Next, for our recommendations for the Windows Server for SMTPS, First, ensure that the port is set. I cannot stress this enough because when we're reviewing our servers, we have to ensure that the ports are being translated to, to the secure ports. Then next, review the authentication that you establish in, in the Windows server. Make sure it's solid. Review the properties. If anything seems off, do more research. And then expand to the virtual server and review its properties. Because this is a GUI, I can't really provide complete step-by-step -step instructions on what to do here for hardening. This is something you're just going to have to look into for yourself. Finally, for post-fix, test the existing configuration. Understand what exactly are we working with at the beginning 
because there could be already errors existing in it and we might not even know. So use the command below in order to test the existing configuration and discover if there are any errors that are currently uh, weighing it down. Next, disable verify. What this does is that we're able to determine if an email address is valid on the servers and it makes for great troubleshooting when we're doing so. And I already left the Linux command down for you below. Finally, network interfaces. What this means is if we want to understand what we're trying to fix and what we're trying to scan, we have to expand our scope. So by extending the network list on what Postfix is listening to, we're able to greatly increase our scanning properties. So add the network segments or individual systems, and I already left the Linux command below. That concludes my presentation. I hope you all found this informative. Have a good night.